In this video, we will see how you can create a game like EA Sports FIFA in Unity. We built up on the existing project called Kickit. You can find the source code by the link in the description. In today's video, we will increase the number of players to 11, just like in a real game. We will add a stadium camera view and display which player is selected and which player receives the pass. Also, you can now switch between different playing formations. And finally, we will add a referee that can draw yellow cards. It's almost a year since we've started with the Unity Soccer tutorial and the game has changed a lot, as you can see. So keep supporting me with your subscriptions and you will soon be able to download the coolest free soccer game available. In a realistic football game there should be 11 players on each team but uh, therefore we want to configure things a bit differently than we did before. Um, we had this player input on the, um, the human player prefab but um, I removed it and put it over here. There is only a single instance of this player input and there is a script connected to it and um, as soon as you um, for example jump this uh, script will um, check what is the active human player and will send the the jump input will call the jump input method on the input system script on that player so the input system script is still here and it will be called uh, by this uh, this one instance game input uh, object that uh, catches all the inputs and sends them to the proper player and from there on it goes uh, like it uh, went before so if you take a look at this game input that's just uh, a modified version of the uh, original uh, starter assets uh, third person starter assets I think it's called from the um, the, the asset store so um, we can still use that uh, third person controller script but we uh, use it a bit different now most professional football games like the AA sports uh, FIFA series use a, a different view than the third person view they use a, a stadium camera so I've added the stadium camera here as well so it stays on this side and it just um, follows the ball there is a script attached to it um, this one you can see that it follows the X and Z position of the ball but uh, the Z position is limited because um, and we don't want uh, the camera to move behind this stand then the view would be obstructed so um, yeah that's just uh, limited so the camera stays in front of this uh, stand but if the ball moves away more the camera will also move a little bit towards the ball so you always have um, a close-up view a little bit but um, also still a good overview of the game you can change the field of view if you um, are not happy with it and I can show you what it looks like now um, you can press the F1 and F2 keys to switch between the uh, third person view and the stadium view over here you can see the stadium view you can see that the camera now moves along the Z axis and uh, it's a bit limited so now it stays on the same C uh, X position so this looks a lot like the uh, FIFA series games you could pass the ball to another player but uh, we had only two players before now we have 11 players on each team so if you want to pass the ball to another player you need to be able to select which player it will be and it also needs to be indicated 
So to indicate this, I've created these two uh, game objects. There's one for the target and one for the selected player that shows the player that is currently selected. That's needed for the stadium view. For the third person view, it's already clear which player is active. So we don't need to show this circle. But uh, for the um, stadium view, we do. And so these are just game objects and there is a, a plane in here and it has a material attached to it. And this material uses the shader. It's a shader that I've created earlier for another project, but I've modified it a little bit. I'm going to show it to you. So it's the selection shader. And um, I've added uh, this part. It was a, a force field shader before and now it's uh, because uh, there is a filter over here. We will, we will only show like a ring on the screen and that uh, takes care of uh, displaying a ring uh, like a circle on the bottom of the player to indicate that he is selected or that he is the target to shoot to. So if we take a look at the code, um, so there is a new key mapping, it's I think the tab key on the keyboard and it um, changes the player it's called uh, on select player this method is called as soon as you change the player and then we find the the current player that is the target and we set it to the next player within the team um, and we also set the, the this marker on the existing one to false and on the other one to active so these uh, markers are actually um, disabled by default and are only enabled when uh, that person is uh, active or if he is the target over here you can see that uh, selection we can see which player is now active so which player we control with the keyboard and uh, also the player you can pass the ball to and with the tap key we can change that player so if you now press the pass key the ball is passed to that player and he becomes the active one over here you can see as soon as you activate one uh, player the player that was currently activated gets this uh, game object um, disabled and the new one gets it enabled so that's actually uh, this marker which is uh, enabled and shows that you are selected and that only happens when we are in a stadium camera view because we don't need uh, to show the selection when we're in third person view because we're just behind the active player Another request I saw that you want to change the jerseys of the players. So change the shirts. Um, I've created uh, different colors of the same shirt. I'm not so good with um, creating uh, a complete uh, shirts and uh, textures from scratch. So um, I just changed the colors a bit. But you get the idea how you can change the, uh, the jerseys completely and even uh, modify other parts but um, the texture needs to map onto the model so um, it's not that easy to just uh, change it um, by using a, a painting program so how does it work well over here we have the uh, the prefab and you can see that uh, we have this uh, shirt uh, game object in here and we can um, replace the material for that and that actually changes the color of the shirt or even the shape of the shirt if you have uh, that um, that material available so um, and if we uh, look at the code I have added a key binding to be able to change the shirt so um, if you look at the game inputs 
you can see that there is an on change shirt method and when you press that on change shirt button then uh, it's F3 by the way on the keyboard then um, the shirt material will be changed and we do that by uh, finding that game object that I just showed you and then uh, changing the material for that and setting it to the new shirt color uh, we also change the background color of the um, the score of or actually of the team name so that you can see that uh, which uh, color belongs to which team and uh, we also make sure that uh, we don't use the same uh, shirt for the um, the first and the second team so because this changes both of the shirts randomly uh, we have this do while loop to make sure that we don't end up with the same uh, shirt for the second team over here you can see how that looks you see that the um, background of the uh, team is also changing according to the uh, the color of the shirts and there is a message indicating that uh, the shirt color has been changed another thing that we can add now we have 11 players is formations in football you have many different formations a formation is a setup where there is a certain number of strikers and defenders and um, they are positioned in a different way on the field so we've implemented this in the new version um, over here I have four formations that I've uh, set up and um, it just defines the position of all the players that they have in the field so if you take a look at um, the game uh, you can see a certain formation over here if I change it observe the right um, small window where I change the formation we see that the players are also moving to different spots on the field if your team has uh, the ball then all the players will move um, according to the formation on the field so if I uh, move this player you can see that the other players start to uh, move along with that player but with uh, keeping uh, respect of the, um, the formation so this is uh, an attacker so he will be a little bit forward but these defenders will always stay a little bit at the back as you can see over here so even if I pass the ball to another player everybody stays at the same position because that's the formation that uh, over here you see the code that takes care of uh, moving along with the um, the attacking player but according to the formation the formation is stored in the spawn position of the players because it's also the position they spawn uh, when the kickoff uh, is taking place and um, we just take the delta from the spawn position of the, uh, the player that has the ball and uh, all the other players also have that same uh, delta from their spawn position and are uh, moving to the point um, so that they will move into formation um, for the uh, that's when we are attacking when we are defending we have another strategy we can only control one player and the other 10 uh, players from our team need to be moved and uh, so they don't stay at one position so what they're going to do is they're going to try to get behind the uh, enemy player so between the enemy player and their own goal so that they can um, try to uh, defend over there so that's what this code is taking care of 
um, over here you can see that defending strategy if I lose the ball to the opponent you will see that all the uh, players from my team move into a certain position so they will stay between the goal and the opponent so that they can uh, help with uh, defending um, and as soon as I take the ball back they move along with the formation so they can help in the attack so if I run forward they will also run forward and if I run back to my own goal they will also follow me and the attackers will always be the guys that will are the most um, closest to the enemy goal in order to create a referee we're going to copy the um, prefab of the computer player let's call it uh, pf referee and we can remove the um, field player script and also the basic rigid body push and character controller so this um, referee shouldn't collide with anything he just walks through the players but he stays away a little bit from the ball um, then we want to put um, um, a different shirt on this guy so we can just take that shirt and um, make it uh, black Um, something like this and also his uh, trousers black and after that save it and uh, create a material for it I've already done that so I can just add this uh, material for the referee to both the um, the shirt and the uh, the trousers so now we've got uh, our ca referee character and we also want to have an, an an animation we will use the the walking animation that we have already but we will also add um, an animation for drawing a card um, i found one at Mixamo that's suitable it's this one you can see that he raises his hand all we need to do is put a yellow card in his hand so he can um, show a yellow card to players so we can download this uh, without skin and um, for unity and then uh, after you've done that you can uh, put the um, animation in here uh, I called it uh, draw card and um, you need to um, to rig it to humanoid uh, and put in an avatar and then click apply I've already done that here and uh, you can see now that we have this animation in here and we can create an animator for that uh, an animator especially for the referee so we have this page layer that's copied from uh, the um, field player uh, animator with the walking and the running so our uh, referee can run if he wants to and he can also draw a card so we added a layer to draw a card and uh, we attach the animation to that the draw card animation and for the yellow card if we take a look at the prefab we can go to the right hand and we can add a, a game object over here call it um, yellow card <coughs> and we can then add um, just any 3d object for example a cube and um, make it uh, look like uh, a yellow card 
So something like this and put it in the proper position. And then we can assign it a material. Uh, and then we can uh, enable and disable this uh, this game object. Uh, uh, so we enable it as soon as we're drawing the yellow card and we disable it afterwards. So when the referee runs around in the field, he doesn't carry that, uh, that yellow card with him. If you take a look at the referee script, you will see that it's a simple script where the um, referee just moves along with the ball. He never gets really to the ball, but stays at a certain distance, so he is not that much in the way, and he doesn't is not that disturbing in the game. So you can see that over here, if the we just measure the the distance from the um, the ball to the to the referee and if that distance is bigger than a certain value then we will move um, towards the ball but if it's smaller than a certain value then we will move away from the ball so then the, the move direction is actually just the opposite of the uh, the direction when you would uh, move to the ball um, and if we are just close enough we just keep looking at the ball um, and uh, we don't uh, move by immediately changing the speed but we set a certain target speed and then we slowly move to that speed um, that's because we don't want any sudden movements to happen when you are just uh, in between uh, these two values and you move uh, closer and more away it just uh, dampens a little bit the, uh, the movement and makes it look more natural and the same goes for the rotation so we have a certain target rotation that we are setting and uh, we are rotating slowly towards that target rotation so that uh, we don't see any shocking things on the screen but we just see everything moving very smoothly over here we see the referee moving uh, as soon as I move towards him with the ball he moves away from me and when I try to move away he keeps following me he also keeps looking at the ball but he never makes any sudden movements but slowly turns around and when we tackling a player that is standing still <coughs> you can see the camera switching toward to the um, referee and drawing the card and then switching back to the game. That's it for this video. If you have any suggestions for improvements, please let me know and maybe they'll appear in the next video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.